In this video, I want to demonstrate how we can derive the covariance between indicator variables and factors when we store our data variables in matrix form. So the idea is that we have a list, or a matrix rather, of indicator scores, where each row in our matrix, as usual, represents the various indicator scores for a given individual. And similarly, we have a matrix F, which is n by f in terms of dimensions, where again, each row represents a given individual's data, but in this case, the data is the various factor scores for that particular individual. So what we're interested in deriving here is the covariance between the indicator variables and those of the factors. So what we're interested in deriving here is the covariance between the indicator scores and the factor scores. So it's first of all worthwhile thinking about what sort of dimensions of the thing that we actually want to get out. Well, there are V indicator variables and there are small f factor variables. So a matrix which is V by F would seem to make sense for representing the covariance matrix between the indicator scores and the factor scores. So how might we get that? Well, just using our sort of common sense, if we want to get something which is V by F in terms of its dimensions, what we could do is we could take the score matrix or the indicator score matrix, take its transpose, in which case we get something which is V by N in terms of its dimensions, and then multiply that through by the factor score matrix. Because then what we have is we have a cancelling of these inner ends, and hence we should get something which is V by F in terms of its dimension. Just like before, like we saw for the covariance or the variance covariance matrix for the indicator scores, all we need to do now is just multiply it through by the inverse of the sample size, so n to the power minus 1. So if we actually carry out this operation here, then first of all, if we take the transpose of the indicator scores, then we get some matrix which looks like this, y11 through to y1v, going all the way through to yn1, and then the final component being yn_v. And then we're using that matrix to multiply the factor score matrix, which is just what we have above. So that's just F11 through to F1F, going all the way down to Fn1, and then finally going across to Fnf. And we need to remember that we're multiplying this also by the inverse of the sample size. So if we carry out this operation, then we can sort of see what the individual components are going to be. So the first component is just going to be formed by taking this first row of the first matrix and multiplying it by the first column of the second. And if we do that, and then if we also include the fact that we've got this n to the power minus 1, what we get is a 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi1 times fi1. And then if we go through to the sort of last component in the first row, that's just going to be formed by taking this first row of the first matrix and multiplying it by the last column of the third of the second matrix rather. So then we just we get a 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of y i1 times f i f. Okay, so that was easy enough for the first row. How about for the last component in the first column? So to get that, what we need to do is we need to take the last row of the first matrix and multiply it by the first column of the second matrix. And if we do that, we find that we get 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yiv times fi1. And if we do the same for the last component in the matrix, we just get 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of, oh, if I keep the order the same, yiv times f I, F. So that is exactly our matrix when we actually do this matrix multiplication here with all the various components in between filled out in sort of analog analogous form. And when we examine each of these components, we see that if we're talking about variables that are standardized, then each of these various components actually represents a covariance. So the first component is the covariance between the first indicator variable and the first factor. So that's just the covariance of y1 with f1. And then if we look at the last component in the first row, that's just the covariance between y1 and ff. Okay, so that was easy enough. And imagine all the sort of values in between being filled out in a similar sort of fashion. Then the last component in the first column is just going to be the covariance between yv and F1, and then the last component in our matrix is just going to be the covariance of YV 
with FF, if you can just about make that out. And I should really sort of close off this matrix as well. So we can see that if we want to get the covariance between the factors and the indicators, all we need to do is take the factor score matrix and multiply it by the transpose of the indicator score matrix. And in which case, what we get out in the end is a matrix which contains all the various covariances of the indicator variables with all of the factor variables.